So I always like to go back as early as possible. So I photographed Paul Tibbetts who dropped the bomb in Hiroshima. And I went to Port Radium, which is the world's first uranium mine. It opened in the 30s. It's on Great Bear Lake, just beneath the Arctic Circles. And on this vast uh, lake, at one end of it is a little tiny village called Delaney, where the Dene Indians live. Not very many, about 300. And um, they, would, they would go across the lake. It would take eight hours to cross the lake to go to the mine. They would work in the mine, which meant taking a crushed uranium ore in burlap sacks, carrying it, and uh, putting it on barges, and barging it eight hours across the lake. And it's crushed ore, so it's very soft, so they slept on it. They inhaled it. The sacks broke. Nobody ever told them that it was radioactive or that there was any health effect at all. But over time, many of those men took ill, and that little town of Delaney got a nickname. It was called the Village of Widows. Went to the mine site, and there were these burlap sacks rotting in the sun. And it was like uh, a freeze frame. Uh, on the mine site, there's this big um, brad bronze monument. There's one paragraph there that is very telling, and that is the one in red. The mine was reopened in 42 by El Dorado, a federal crown company, to supply uranium for the Manhattan Project, the development of an atomic bomb. Now, you can't find that so easily in modern history books. The fact that that uranium went into the atomic bomb is, is no longer something that people uh, brag about. But there it is uh, in bronze on the site. So I thought that was uh, proof positive. Some people even deny it. They say, no, no, it didn't happen. It, it had to happen. It was there. This is called the Prophet's House. The Prophet, his name is Ayah. He was a great healer among the Dene. And he had a vision that the people had produced uh, some very dangerous substance, and it got made into a log. And the log fell on uh, people on the other half of the earth, and it created fires that could never be put out. Now, the Hiroshima bomb, you may know, is a very long, like a long cigar. So he had a vision that uh, this material from their mind would turn into an atomic bomb. And they were so crushed to learn that they had been the ones who had provided, uh, not all, but <coughs> some of the uranium that ended up in the Hiroshima bomb. They were, didn't know what to do. So I, I suggested, why don't, why don't we have a delegation go to Hiroshima on August 6th every year? It is the most moving uh, ceremony I've ever been to. I've been there five times, and on August 6th, they ring the bell right at that moment, uh, 16 minutes after 8 in the morning, and uh, all day long, surviving uh, people from the bomb, and every year there are less of them, come and uh, kneel before the cenotaph, which includes the names of all the people who died during the bomb. So a small delegation went and said, we are from Great Bear Lake, and we contributed uranium to the bomb, and we're very sorry about it. It was quite a, quite a good experience. It's, it's a document from the Department of Mines of Canada. And the thing about it that's so interesting is the date is 1931, long before the development of the atomic bomb. I'll read it out to you. They're holding it here. Uh, we brought it up and asked them to hold it. Recent investigations in the field of radium poisoning have led to the conclusion that the precautions are necessary even in the handling of substances of low radioactivity. Got to be careful. Why? Because they eventually may have serious consequences such as lung cancer, bone necrosis, rapid anemia are possible diseases due in the deposition of radioactive substances in the cell tissue or bone structure of the body. 1931. But this warning was not given to the miners. Radium. It was given to the researchers in Ottawa who were analyzing the ore. They never got around to telling the workers, the uranium miners. 
But the point is they, they fully understood the hazards of handling even low levels of these substances. And there's the first atomic bombs. Two kinds, a uranium bomb, Hiroshima, and then a plutonium bomb, which is a whole other question for Nagasaki. Mm -hmm.